Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today we look at chapter 7. I'd like to recognize that I've gotten this tutorial from w3schools.com. It's an amazing platform which you can use to learn almost any programming language. What I love most about it is the fact that you can practice as you learn without the need to install any software. So you just practice on the web platform as you learn. It's really great and that's why I chose it uh in terms of getting content from it in order to teach you this particular unit in this topic we are going to learn about mysql and php i know we've, we've covered quite a lot uh, in fact we've covered the entire crude you remember i told you about crude mm, have, we, have we covered the entire crude uh, so i told you about crude 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 it's an acronym crude so crude uh, crude is for create read update and delete so so far we've done creating that is adding data to the table reading the data from the table we've not done updating and delete but we are going to do it but in this particular topic, we're just going to learn about the commands that are used to do that and how we implement it specifically in PHP. So let's dive in. So with PHP, you can connect and manipulate databases. So that's one of the features you can connect to and manipulate a database. Now, MySQL is one of the most popular database systems that is used uh, together with PHP applications. So what is my SQL? Number one, important, it is a database system. So we have different database systems. Other than my SQL, we have Oracle and uh, others. So MySQL is just a database system and that is used on the web. Now MySQL is a database system that runs on the server. So it also runs on the web server. Mm, so runs on the web on the web so when it's running on a server then it's a web server it is ideal for both small and large applications uh, some advantages it's very fast it's reliable and it's easy to use now mysql uses the standard query language sql standard query language uh, so the commands for mysql is very similar to sql uh, also known as SQL. SQL. Now, MySQL compiles on a number of platforms. Simply means that it, it can run on almost any operating system. Uh, now, MySQL is open source, so you can download it and use it free of charge. And MySQL is developed, distributed, and supported by the Oracle Corporation. Many people don't know this, and that's why it's a powerful uh, database because Oracle Corporation also uh, 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 owns the Oracle uh, database management system, which is one of the most popular uh, and secure databases that is used by most corporates. MySQL is named actually after uh, one of the co-founders' daughter. Uh, so the daughter is called My. My my and that's why they decided to name it my sql okay now the data in the database in my sql is actually stored in tables uh, now a table is normally a collection of related data and it normally consists of columns and rows so when we are creating the voting management system we created a user table and so user table will have some related data about the user and like the first name uh, so the first column first name uh, uh, surname and other names then email address then contact so it's just a table now databases are used for storing information categorically and a company may have a database with the following tables for example employees products customers orders etc etc 
So this is just uh, an, an intro that a MySQL database is composed of tables. Now PHP, when combined with MySQL, are class uh, cross-platform. And I think we say that MySQL can be compiled on any platform. So that means it can run on Windows. It can also run on Unix platform, like the Linux server. Now, here we want to look at some of the uh, database queries. Now, MySQL uses SQL, uh, SQL queries. And uh, uh, SQL queries, for example, this is an example here. This is an SQL query that is used to select uh, the last name from a table called employees. So the command is select and then the name of the column uh, for example last name then from the keyword then the name of the table so this is just an example of a mysql query so we're going to see many more as we continue to learn now before we jump into the queries it is important that we understand that uh, some changes occurred uh, that is from PHP version 5, um, uh, MySQL database started using what we call the MySQL I extension. The I here stands for improved, improved, improved. Now, you can either use MySQL I extension or you can use the PDO extension. Uh, which is PHP data objects. Now, as I said earlier, uh, earlier versions of uh, PHP used to use MySQL just like this. MySQL underscore, for example, connect. Connect like that. So we had that function, MySQL. But for now, we have to do MySQLi, for example, connect like that. So uh, earlier versions used to use MySQL, but now we either use MySQLi, I for improved, or we use the PDO, the PHP data object. So let's see how, how that is done. Now, how do you choose whether you should use MySQLi or PDO? Uh, you can use whatever you like, but you must understand the advantages and disadvantages of each one of them. One of the advantages of the PHP data objects is that it can work on 12 different database systems, where, where else uh, MySQLi can only work on the MySQL databases. So what does that imply? It implies that when you want to shift your system uh, to use a different database system, it will be easier if you had written using PDOs. Uh, rather than if you had written using MySQLi. If you had written using MySQLi, you will have to rewrite your entire project. But if you had written using PDO, then you can use 12 different uh, database systems and you'll only make minimal, minimal changes to it. Okay, now both MySQLi and PDO are object oriented. MySQLi, however, also offers a procedural API. So for example, for us, we've been using my SQLI in a procedural manner in the system that we've been building. So we've been using the procedural manner. Uh, but in this particular topic, we will see how to use the OOP way. Uh, so we're going to see examples here. So another thing is that both of them support prepared statements. Now, I'm giving you this as a reading assignment. I want you to go and read more about prepared statements, but generally one of the ways you can use to secure uh, your, your database and especially against SQL injection is by using prepared uh, statements. Also, uh, uh, some people also allude to the fact that uh, prepared statements are executed faster uh, compared to uh, 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 just written, written queries. So read more uh, about prepared statements when you have uh, when you have time. Okay.
So let's have a look at how do you connect, how do you connect uh, to the database using MySQLi in PHP, in PHP. Okay, I'm sure we've already seen this. Now, this is the MySQLi uh, connect, MySQLi connect function. Normally, it takes in several parameters, one of them being the server name, the username and the password uh, so server name for example you've seen here we've declared local host uh, we've declared some username there and some password there now uh, you can see here we're saying new we are creating a variable then we're saying new meaning we are creating an object from this particular class so this is the OOP way of using my SQLI so this is the OOP way, so you use new here. So this is object oriented. So you can see here, we just want to say if connection, if the connection has an error, then die. That is don't execute any other line and print out this and also print out the error. Else, just print that we have been able to connect successfully. Uh, so that is what we're having there. Okay. Now, after you've uh, after you're done using PHP, it's always important for you to close the connection. And to close the connection, you use the variable, the connection variable that you created, and you use the close function. And this is called the arrow arrow operator. So just a hyphen and uh, this particular arrow here is called the arrow arrow operator. So that's how we close the collection connection at the end of the PHP page okay now how do we create how do we create a database in php using mysql um, to do that we use the create database statement here we want to create a database called my db my db so let's see how that will look like so this part we already covered the connection part and now what we want to look at is how to create the db uh, so you might be wondering why are we writing a php code to create the database now sometimes you may want to sell your entire application uh, to people who may implement the system on other servers and therefore you might create a setup.php page when that page is is uh, is executed then it creates the database create the tables that your application needs so that they can begin from an empty from an empty database and now the system can continue to work and uh, so that's why sometimes you might need to do this okay so here we have the sql statement to create the database so the command is create then database uh, create database then the name of the database is here. The name of the database is here. You might have noticed that anytime we write MySQL or SQL statements, we use uh, uppercase, uppercase letters. So that is the that is the programming convention. Anytime uh, uh, you're writing SQL statements, the keywords like create database, select from, they should be in uppercase. So remember that. So after writing the SQL statement, then we have to execute the query. To execute the query, we do this. So here we're just executing the query. Then we want to check if it's returning true. So if it returns true, then we're just going to print out that the database has been created successfully. Otherwise, we're going to print out this message and the error, uh, specific error that has occurred. And this is how we close the connection. I see here we opened the connection here we close the connection mm -hmm. so that's how we do that okay okay so i give you a minute to read this
okay so let's move on to creating a table now that we have created a database how do we create a table we create a table using the create table statement we want to create a table called my guests we want it to have the column id first name last name email and registration date reg underscore date so how do we do this in php so this is the command create create table then the name of the table then after that you use an opening and closing brackets then the name of the column then the data type so you see name first name then vacha and last name vacha email vacha and then in brackets the number of uh, uh, the length of the field how many characters or numbers can it take for the id we want to take six for vacha 30 30 for email we want it to 50 maximum then we have range date here the timestamp so we're gonna def uh, uh, we're gonna set it to have default as the current timestamp uh, so when they create an account then this is going to be updated automatically okay then uh, here here we also have unsigned for the id unsigned so unsigned means unsigned integer when we talk of unsigned integer it means it cannot have minus or plus so it can only have numbers from zero going forward so zero one two three so it cannot have negative numbers so that is what unsigned means so this is going to be unsigned integer the id so it's not going to have negative numbers then for the id as i explained earlier it should always be auto increment and it should be configured as the primary key so after that you do a comma then you go on to the next column now now for the first name and last name we have not null not null here means this field cannot be empty anytime you are updating this column this field cannot be empty so that is what not null means so if you try to post just the last name and not the first name you're going to get an error that you cannot post and the last name without posting also the first name something like that but vacha uh, but email here email can be empty so they can enter first name last name then email empty then registration date as i've said it's gonna save up the current the current timestamp okay so i've already explained this i have already explained all of that and this is just the example of creating the table now in php so you see you have to start with the php tag then this is the connection we've already done that then here is the command here is the sql command so we just create a variable sql then we equate it to that particular sql query command that we've already gone through then here we say connection query then we put in the sql variable there so the query is going to execute this using this connection and if it's true it's going to print out if nothing goes wrong it's going to print out now nah, table my guests created successful otherwise it's going to print the error message and the specific error that has occurred yeah so that's how we create a table uh, in php using my sql and now how to insert data into the table we've just created a table so how do we insert data now here we have some syntax rules to follow i already mentioned some of this number one the sql query must be quoted in php it simply means the sql query must be put inside double quotes uh, inside double quotes then string values inside the query must be quoted so as i said for things like first name last name email those ones that have vacha they have to be inside quotes 
so if for the sql statement here if for the sql statement you used double quotes then for the string values inside the sql statement you use single single quotes then numeric values like the id or the id number or the phone number must not be quoted so for integer integer values don't quote them then for null null values you don't also quote you don't quote null okay so this is the this is the syntax insert into then the table name then inside brackets this bracket you do a comma separated list of the columns so column one comma space column two comma space so like i uh, first name comma last name comma email comma and something else but otherwise if there are just those three then you don't have to specify that last comma then you use the keyword values values then you go ahead and do an opening bracket and a closing bracket and this value will go to the first column this one will go here and this one will go here etc etc so that is how you insert data into the table let's look at that now uh okay okay so it's just important that i mention this so we've created an empty table called my guests that has five columns id first name last name email and registration date now we want to fill it with data now if a column is auto increment or a column is a timestamp with default uh, current timestamp then it is no need to be specified in the sql query uh, what that means is we we are not going to add any data to the id to the id field or the registration date field because they are automatically going to be uh, to be generated so the value there is going to be automatically generated for the id for example if we add the first person it's going to be one we add another person two we add another person three for the registration date it's the number of seconds uh, since 1970 1st january uh, at 12 a.m okay so this is how our php is going to look like uh, okay so here we just have our connection here you notice that now we have the database connection we didn't have this earlier so now we have the database connection because we didn't have a database uh, okay then this is the query uh, this is the sql statement i'm sorry the sql statement so insert into my guess now notice we don't do id we just do first name we do last name we do email so we also don't do registration date then uh, because it's a voucher we put it inside quotes see single quotes otherwise the entire sql statement look here and here inside double quotes so it means they you remember the the rule they have to be inside quotes so john then do remember the comma then space do then the email address so that's the sql statement and after that we go ahead and execute the query and find out if it's happened successfully if it's happened successfully then we just have that new record created successfully otherwise we're going to get the, an error and we can print out the exact error that occurred using that particular line so uh, that is that is it about inserting data inserting data into the database now this is amazing um, in earlier versions of mysql we didn't have this feature so this has just come up with the mysqli excuse me with my sqli so uh you can be able there are times when you, you want to add a person then get their id so that you can use their data 
immediately so in such instances uh, you had to do another query again you had to do another query again in the table in order to get that person maybe by using their email address or their phone number but uh, with mysqli you can actually get the id of the last inserted person of the last inserted person so this is how you do it this is how you do it okay so we just inserted john doe so this is the query we are executing so that we can insert now to get the last id this is what you do the connection then the arrow operator then insert underscore id so it's gonna save uh, that to this variable and now you can actually use it anyhow you want including printing it out so that's how we we get the last id so it's a very powerful feature you may not understand that very uh, very much now until you start building serious projects okay now you might have already been asking yourself how do you add multiple how do you add multiple data uh, to uh, uh, to a table at the same time to do that you use the multi query function my sqli multi query function and this is how it looks like so when you talk of adding multiple data look here we want to add we want to add john we also add mary and we add julie uh, in a in a single query so to do that we write we declare a variable sql then we write the sql statement and end with a semicolon look here then we write another we write the same variable sql but now this time we do dot dot is equals to now dot is used to concatenate to concatenate means to join it's simply going to join this it's going to join this statement this one it's going to join it with this one so that's what the dot is going to do within the same variable then again here we do sql dot is equals to so again it's going to join it with that so if you echo if you echo sql down here you, you're going to see all these three statements all of them separated by a semicolon uh, so that's that's what is happening there okay then the function is called this multi underscore query so if you do that and uh, it's executed successfully you get that otherwise you get the error that that has occurred and you also get the the the, the sql statement here we're just printing the sql statement that is going to have all these three insert statements eh? uh, so that's how we do multiple adding multiple data to the to the database to the table okay so after we've added data to the table we want to see how to retrieve the data from the table and to retrieve the data from the table you need to use the select statement the syntax is select then the column name or names then the keyword from then the table name for example now you can see an example in the next in the next uh in the next slide but here uh, we're also just being shown that in case you want to select all if you want to select all the columns from the table you can use the star so this star here means all columns so that you don't specify first name comma uh, last name comma email so you just use star so when you use star it's going to select also the id first name last name email and registration dates all of them in the table name so let's see this example okay so here we have a select statement so select we want to select the id 
the first name and the last name from this table my guests so once we do that then that is the sql statement then we execute the query query sql then we use the num rows function so connection uh, result you know we created a variable here called result it's the same one result num rows greater than zero so num rows if this select statement has found some rows in the table that has matched this selection criteria then it's going to return the number of rows so here we're just saying if num rows is greater than zero meaning if you found something in the table then do this then do this otherwise echo zero results because num rows will return one if it founds if it finds one row it will return two if it finds two rows but if it doesn't find anything it returns zero so if it's greater than zero it means there's something then what we're doing here is using the while loop to loop around uh, the rows that have been retrieved so we also did this uh, so uh, uh, row is equals to results fetch a sock then now we can be able to print out the id we can be able to print the first name and the last name in each loop mm -hmm. so that's how we do that okay so this is going to output that that will be the output the output of this particular code because so far our table has john mary and julie okay so i've already explained that then we have the delete statement used to delete a record by a record we mean a row from a table uh, now generally this is a very sensitive this is a very sensitive uh, command delete normally it's never used without where a where clause because if you use it without where uh, then it's going to delete all the rows so normally you want to use it with the where clause so that you can say for example where some column like id id is equals to two and it's going to delete mary id is equals to one and it's going to delete john uh, but if you just say delete from my guests semicolon then it's going to delete all the rows so you should be careful uh, uh, and remember to use the where clause whenever uh, whenever you uh, whenever you use the delete statement okay so so far this is how our table looks like this is how our table looks like with the id first name last name email and registration date you want to delete you want to delete someone so the sql statement is delete from my guest where id is equals to three so we use the query function and if it's uh, deleted successfully we are told if there's an error we also told about the error and now our table will be without is it jolie without julie without julie because julie's id was three three so the id for julie was three and here we said delete where id is equals to three we're just going to delete julie and no one else okay then updates update 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 is interesting and easy again so normally it has the update keyword then the table name then the set keyword then the column and the value you want to set the new value you want to set another column new value you want to set 
then the where clause for example id is equals to three so for example we want to change julie's name uh, to some other name uh, okay so this is how our table looks like right now with john and mary john do and mary so we want we want to change we want to change mary's name to do so that her name is also the last name is also mary mary do something like that i think that's what we want to do yes that's what we want to do okay so here you can see update update the table name then set then the column name so we want to set the last name to be equal to do for who for the person whose id is equals to two and that is mary then we execute the query and we can give feedback to the user if it happened correctly and now we have john doe and mary doe after using the update statement update so that's how we edit the profile of a person we haven't done that yet we are supposed to do it and we will do it we will create a page for editing our information so that we use the update statement okay and now as we wind up we want to look at the limit uh we have a keyword in mysql called limit the limit keyword also known as a clause is used to specify the number of records that is to be returned uh, why we want to limit the number of records because sometimes databases can grow to be so huge and when you select when you select everything then returning that large number of records can impact on performance so can actually cause your server to hang imagine if you're having a million people in your user table and you want to you you, you want to select all of them at the same time and it's going to cause your server to hang so in order to avoid such instances we use the limit clause now uh, use the limit clause okay so let's let's have a look so this is an example assume we wish to select assume we wish we wish to select uh, records from 1 to 30 from a table called orders then the query will look like select all the columns from orders limit then the number that you want to limit this is going to select from one all the way to 30 inclusive so that's how we do limits now when the sql query is run it will return the first 30 records what if we want to select just between number 16 to 25 now we can do this by using the offset keyword or clause offset now the sql query below will return only 10 records starting on record number 16. now look select all columns from orders limits so we want to begin we, we want to say that we want 10 records we want 10 records then offset so begin from the next value from here it's going to begin from 16 it's going to begin from 16 then it's going to go all the way to 25 so that is offset offset very important so please remember that one too now this command has an alternative syntax to achieve the same thing you can also use limit then where you want to start from then the number of records you want to return comma then the number of records you want to return so without using the offset keyword you can just use this limit 15 comma 10 so it's gonna begin from record number 16 mm. then loop for 10 uh, 10 times okay so ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for your attention that is it
about mysql and php uh i hope you've learned a lot anyone with a question anyone with a question okay so thank you very much